الحمد لله بالعالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي أنزل على أبده الكتاب وحلم حياج الله وجه أجمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وهو أحل حمد وثانا وأشهد أن لا إله وده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده الرسول والمستافر على هم سالي وسالم على ذكر رسولك محمد وأهله وصحبه وسلم Praise be to the one Allah who revealed the book to his servant Muhammad and did not make any distortion to it. I praise him Allah, the exalted one and the high, and I thank him. It is he who deserves the praise and gratitude. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant of Allah, his messenger who was chosen by Allah. O oh Allah, let your blessings and your peace be upon your servant, your messenger Muhammad, and on his family and companions. Alhamdulillah, but I mean, if we are, have awakened, we are still here, then it is a blessing and a mercy. Please look at me, don't just be distracted. Look at me. Shaitan always wants to distract us from something. Maybe one word, maybe one letter will change our whole focus, our whole being. Just in Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim alone, there are 19 letters. Those 19 letters and spelling out Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim represents a, a it, 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 it. There are, eight, there are 19 angels that put us, that are waiting uh, to put us in hell for our bad behavior, just Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim those 19 letters, each letter is enough to un offset that angel from putting us in the hellfire. That's why when Allah Almighty calls us to Juma, we have to learn to give our undivided attention. Because when you come to Juma, Allah is saying, quit business and come to remembering him. He's remembering you. Everyone will learn their station, will learn something about themselves. I'm not standing here as a lecturer. I'm also listening to what I am saying to you. I am also looking to be guided. And guidance is something that comes every day. Can you live from the oxygen on the oxygen that you had yesterday? What about the oxygen you had this morning? Can you still live off that oxygen? That oxygen has to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Even when you leave here, that oxygen still has to keep coming. Even when you're asleep and not aware of anything, that oxygen continues to come. That's how it is with guidance and that's why we have to stay diligent and we have to stay focused and we have to stay aware because anyone Breath that we lose could be our life. One step could be our last step. So we have to learn to listen to that that comes to us from our Lord Allah Almighty because shaitan, the devil of humanity, is looking to destroy us. You know why he's so angry? He's more angry with the descendants of Adam and Eve than he is with Adam and Eve. Because he was in paradise. He was in paradise with Adam and Eve. He was in the divine presence. And yet he acted a fool in divine presence. But what he did not know, and what the angels did not know, is that Allah Almighty has a plan. And this plan is not something that humanity is always going to know. When Shaitan was able to trick Adam and Eve, they were in paradise. Now he's more angry with us because how in the world can there be believers who are not in divine presence, who are in the lowest life dunya, believing in the unseen? 
So Shaitan is still, he's not secure in his disbelief. And so he's always trying to justify his disbelief by saying, look at humanity, who is the crown of creation, not obeying their Lord. And look how easy I'm able to distract them. Look how easy I'm able to trick them. They're not looking to me. They're looking to this world. They're looking for the distractions because they don't know who they are and whose they are. But when you have those among people, among humanity, in the plight of all the distractions, of all of the decadence, and they still remember their Lord in spite of the TV being on 24-7, radios on, all kinds of styles, all kinds of people, all kinds of events going on, and they still focus on their purpose. He is angry. And we're lucky because whatever we were doing, we left and came here. We don't know the blessings that we're going to receive just by walking in this door and listening to something about our soul. Mostly we're hearing something about our bodies, about our minds, all the TV shows. Everything is addressing our bodies. I just saw a program last night in Indonesia. Indonesia is about almost 100, about 100 percent, maybe 99.9 percent .9 Muslim. These are supposed to be the best of people evolved from mankind. These are the people who are supposed to accept it. The Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran that accepted Moses, that accepted Jesus, and accepted Abraham, and accepted Muhammad. Here they are, all smoking tobacco, which is the bowels of Shaitan. Babies two years old, smoking like they're grown up. This is where Shaitan it gets to us by feeding us his bowels and feeding us his urine, his that liquor and beer and wine. That's the urine of Shaitan. The tobacco and the smoking is the bowels of Shaitan. This is how he gets into our blood and our being. And so we have those distractions in us. So when the Lord Almighty gathers us, and it's going to focus us on who we are and whose we are, so we can get out of the shackles of Shaitan, because we have ingested his urine and his bowels, he activates in us and makes us distractible. He knows what he's doing. Because he knows if you ever wake up, the devil is no longer as significant. Because the only way the world is like it is, from east to west and north to south, is because the devil is reigning. You take the devil out, and you got paradise in earth, on earth. In his camp, the lowest life. And that's why Coming to Juma, it's every Friday. It's, called, it's the Eve. It is the best day of the, of the week. It is the week. It is the day in which Adam alayhi salam was created. It was the day that Eve was created. It was the day that Adam failed. It was the day that he rose up again. It was so many beautiful, powerful events happened on Friday. It was a Friday that Moses parted the Red Sea. It was a Friday when Jesus was, took up up to the heavens. Y'all thought he died on the cross? See, what had happened to those disciples when they left Jesus Christ to fend for himself. Allah Almighty was his defender. If Allah Almighty was his defender, why would he be like the disciples and put him on the cross and hang him out, set him out to his enemies? That don't make no doggone sense. And that's why Allah Almighty had to send the Quran to correct that up. Allah says what Jesus Christ said in the Quran. Jesus Christ says, Oh Allah, you know that I heal people by your leave. I brought them from the dead by your leave. All the miracles I performed was by your leave. I did not attribute anything to myself. And you are my witness. That's why he has to return. Yes, Muslims are looking for the return of Jesus Christ. You can't be no Muslim if you, ain't, you, you don't believe in Jesus Christ. Esau ibn Maryam. He's in the line of all the prophets. He brought the gospel. He was the spirit of Allah Almighty. Moses brought the laws. 
Islam, the Prophet Muhammad has the spirit and the laws. And that's why you can't jump over to Christianity or, 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 or Judaism and not accept Islam. It's all Islam. It's always been Islam. Submission to the will of Allah Almighty. Shaitan has been very, very strategic in distracting us, dividing us, and conquering us because we've never been taught the truth. We've never had the understanding that we need to be strong. He always can razzle and dazzle us and, and distract us. Why do you think the best full, the best free, free throw shooters in the NBA, the highest percentage, when those people behind the, the basket throwing those balloons and flashing, they always focus on the hoop. They're never distracted by a green, a red, or a blue balloon. The ones that had the local centers, they, they saw red, they saw green, they saw blue. The ones, the best players, the best in anything, have a greater focus than the other. They all came through the womb of a mother. They all have to eat, sleep, and drink, and, 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 and sleep, and drink, and, and eat. But what is the difference here? Their understanding of themselves and working and developing themselves so they can focus on the things that are most important in their lives. See, everything that's going on, you don't have, it's, it doesn't concern you. What concerns you right now is where you are and to listen to guidance, something that's going to help your soul, to put a discipline on your mind and your body. To start a practice in your life that you start towards your perfection. Yes, we're going to make mistakes when you're practicing anything. You're going to make mistakes. But the perfection is not so much the human being. The perfection is the practice of getting to the perfection. What is the perfection? Allah says the heart of the believer is the house of Allah Almighty. That perfection of the human being, the only human being is the only one that has the ability to reach a perfection. We are created, we are created imperfected. We are created weak. And this is why Shaitan did not respect Adam. Says, okay, he's created from a low class, the low life dunya, from earth, a black mud. I'm from a smokeless fire. He's from clay. I'm better than him. Already in his mind, who told him that? Allah didn't tell him that. He just assumed that through his ignorance. He became his own God. That is the nature of the ego. He represents the worst in us. Because we think the same way. We think we're God. So we have a big problem and we say, oh my God, help me. If we ask for help and we get the help, why can't we always be in that same state of thinking? See, our thinking is not clear. And that's why the prophets, they came among and lived among people because they represented the best of us. The Quran is the words of Allah Almighty. That's why no man can translate it. I can read you some, what, you, what they might say is a translation. Bismillah rahman rahim It's not in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. The letters in Bismillah rahman rahim each letter has 24,000 meanings, each letter. These are Allah's words. And Allah only gives those meanings to whom he wills. Why would Allah Almighty give us the meaning of what he wills in order to raise us up if we're going to submit to something inferior to us? We're going to be convinced by Satan that he is the Lord of the world. Why would Allah Almighty raise us? That's why we have to be gangster without Iman. Iman is an energy. It is a, an exercise of our will 
to really know who we are and whose we are. That's a, we know we find out any for everything else. We're so nosy. We're looking out our windows and everything. We're investigating everything everywhere else. We're all in everybody else's business, but we're not in our own business. By the time we all looking at somebody else and asking somebody else about what they're doing, we're not even aware of what we're doing. Shaitan is in our pockets robbing us. And that's why Esau, Abraham, Miriam, Jesus Christ said when everybody was saying, talking about uh, Miriam was a sinner, she was a sinner. And he said, who is free from sin? Who, if you live in a glass house, how can you throw stones at somebody if you live in a glass house? That's ridiculous. None of us are free of sin. We, 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 we are born into sin. That is the weakness of ourselves. But we don't have to leave here as sinners. And that's what Satan, Azazel, never could understand about the human being, that the human being had the ability to reach perfection. What is that perfection? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. None of the prophets could have become a prophet unless they accepted the love of Muhammad because Allah is writing above his throne, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. All prophets took their lights from that light. And so when Allah Almighty sent the prophet physically here, there was no more need to send any of the prophets because his light had already come through Adam, it already come through Abraham, it already come through uh, Moses and, and Jesus and, 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 and Jacob and, and Ishmael and David. All through the Old Testament and New Testament. I don't know why Jews and Christians think that Allah Almighty is not the same God that the Prophet Muhammad, that they're, they're bringing the Quran. I don't know why they think that. Unless they're listening to shaitan. Unless we're listening to shaitan as Muslims. Thinking that the, 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 that the Old Testament was invalid. Or the New Testament was invalid. The purified pages of Abraham was invalid. The Psalms of David was invalid. That's an ignorance. That's just as ignorant as going anywhere in the world. And water is not wet. You cannot take the elements out of H2O. H2O is which makes it water. We have become so ignorant to it's disgusting even to ourselves. That's why we get so drugged out. We don't even like ourselves. How do we expect somebody else to like us? Let alone love ourselves. We haven't even started the process of loving ourselves because we don't even understand ourselves. We've been listening to Shaitan so long, beating us down, and he works through everybody, even ourselves. And that's why we got to practice through our worshiping. Our practice, we make mistakes as we practice. See, making your prayers and going on Hajj and fasting during Ramadan and giving up charity does not make you righteous. Because there are people who say, you know, I make my five prayers a day. I done been on a hundred, hundred hodges. I always give charity. And I fast during Ramadan. And Shaitan used them the biggest because now they are proud of their worship. So if you're going to be proud of your worshiping because you look at your worship as being righteous, then you're going to look down at people that are not doing what you do. You already missed the destination. That's why a man is an energy that you continue got to exercise. It's like inhaling and exercise and exhaling. It's an action that you got to continue or you die. Hold your breath. See how long you can hold. You got to continue that activity. You got to continue exercising your faith. All the time. When you fall, you got to exercise it to get up. Or ask somebody to help you get up. 
What happens when you're sick? Your ardent desire is not anything else but to get well. What happens when you have some pain in your body? Your ardent desire is to get rid of that pain. I know whenever I get sick and I got some pain, I'm focusing on it. I'm finding a way to get out of this pain. I'm finding a way to get out this illness. I'm finding a way to get out this poverty. I'm trying to get a, find a way to get out this loneliness. I'm trying to find a way to get out this unhappiness, this sadness, this hatred, this envy, this jealousy, this pride. I'm trying to find a way to get out of that hell. We weren't like that in paradise. We are paradise people. You think we just came here through our mother? We, this is our first existence here? Do you know what you said when you came out your mother's womb? They don't even talk about this. Very few people even know. When you came out your mother's womb, did you say, Ma? Did you say, Daddy? You said, Allah! Allah! Because that's all we knew. Tabir! Tabir! You made a promise that you will always be obedient servants. That means that we were in existence before we came to the physical plane. Satan and beat us down so bad, we don't even know if we're going to come. We really don't, and that's why we have no power. Don't you know this world does not, this world only submits to power. It's not the money that makes the world go round. It's the love that makes the gold the love go round. Who got the most love? Your president, your mayor, your alderman. Allah's still running this. But you know how he's running it? He running it through Laila Haidala Muhammad Rasulullah. Tabir! This is the forgotten secret. And those who did discover that secret, Allah Almighty raised them up to tell everybody. And Allah protects them. They're the gangsters. They don't fear Shaitan's gangsters. Shaitan's gangsters don't have no, no, no power over them. When Joseph was in prison, when the king called Joseph out of the prison to interpret his dream, that that king had wazir's so-called wise people around him, and they sat down with him, and he said, I want you to interpret the dream. And so they said, the old what first wise man says, Oh king, what was the dream? He told him the dream. And he gave his interpretation of the dream. He asked the second one, he said, the second wise man asked. The third asked the same thing. What was the dream? So it was the man that was in the king's camp that said, I know someone who was in prison with me that can interpret dreams. He brought him out. Before Joseph walked up to him, Joseph was telling him what he dreamed and what the dream was about. He didn't even ask him, what did you dream? Here he was, Joseph, that was thrown down a well and was ostracized by his brothers, that was seduced by one of the king's uh, uh, clergymen. Here he is in prison, coming out and telling the king what his dream was and what the interpretation of the dream. He, this was a man that had reached his perfection. What was that perfection? Allah Almighty. Jump in! Allah Almighty. The king had all these shaitans around him. And this is why Allah Almighty had told Shaitan Azazil to bow down to Adam because of the perfection that Adam had in him, which was Allah Almighty. And we've forgotten about that. We run into churches, we run into mosques, we run into synagogues. We don't have no faith. We don't use our iman. We use our money. We use our influence. We use our guns. We use our dope. We use anything we can to influence somebody to think the way we think. That's what Shaitan does through us. And where does it lead us? Nowhere. As I spoke to you before, every day, every day, between Asa and Margaret, don't think 
that Allah Almighty cannot do what he wills to do. He brought us from a sperm drop, and now we're walking and talking and doing stuff, flying planes and driving cars and writing books and doing all kinds of stuff. So don't say that it's impossible. There's nothing that's impossible to Allah Almighty. Every day between us and Maghrib, Allah Almighty, those of our people, our ancestors, that have left this physical world, they get to see on the big screen what their descendants are doing. Some of them are sad. My descendants doing all shaitan truth, and they are begging to come back. And some of our ancestors are happy because they said, you know what, they're gangsters, they're keeping it real. They believe in Allah Almighty and they ain't seen Allah. They have not seen Allah. They remember Allah and they not seen Allah. What would happen if they really saw Allah? Don't you know to believe in Allah Almighty without seeing Him is one of the most powerful uh, 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 miracles that exist? When you have that favor, that is nothing less than Moses parting the Red Sea and Jesus bringing somebody back from the dead and, and being ascended up to the heavens. That's why Shaitan is angry. He said, they ain't never seen Allah. But they talk as if they see Allah. Knowing if they don't see Allah, they know Allah see them. That scares him. And that's why when Allah Almighty sends us around those kind of servants, Shaitan come among us to distract us because Shaitan don't want us to listen to them. Because they may give us something that's going to spark something in us that we're no longer going to be slaves to Shaitan. He ain't going to have us killing each other. Being all locked down in prison for the rest of our life for what? Three hots and a cot. Losing our doggone manhood. Thinking that it's cool to drop our pants. Leaving our babies to be raised in the streets. And to do what? To do the same thing, to repeat the same decadence. To be the army of the devil. Come on. If we're here, we're lucky. That we're hearing something that's going to strengthen us, our manhood and our womanhood. I don't care how strong a woman is, she can never be a man. And I don't care how feminine a man is, he can never be a woman. So let's man up so that our women can women up. When Allah Almighty created the woman, He didn't create him from his some from his brain or, or from his from his from his uh, his, his earlobe or, or from his eye or from his skull, because she wasn't created to be on top of him, beating him down, and He didn't create him from his ankles from her toes so that we could be stepping on them. Allah created the woman from his side, his rear, to be next to his heart, to love them. And protect them under his wing. Protect them under his wing and protect them. Because Allah gave the man more power than he gave the woman. So that's why it was abomination when our grandfather Adam was cheated by Satan. It destroyed us as a people. And we got to come back. And we got to bring our women back in the fold and protect them so we can raise our women and children, men, boys and girls to be men and women. How do you think this is going to stop bringing the national guard in here? You're going to say, say no to drugs. Say no to killing your brother when you don't understand who the heck you are. Shaitan is behind the whole thing. Throwing rocks and hiding his hands. And because we have not been taught to recognize him, first of all, in ourselves, we don't recognize him nowhere else. I don't care how many times we go to on Hajj or go into a mosque. If you don't know who you are, you ain't doing nothing. We collecting the wrong treasures. We keeping the long, wrong treasures. We gathering the treasures of this world, the diamonds and the gold and the money and all of that, and ain't taking a penny out with us. Instead of the guys that Allah Almighty keeping the prophets and, and, and the saints and, and the inheritors and those in authority, those are the real treasures. Those who we keep, we listen to them and we learn from them because they're teaching us about ourselves. The Quran only confirms what they 
they say. Their life is a, the Quran compromise, compro, uh, uh, confirms their lives. They're living and walking and talking Qurans. Because they've left this dunya to work in the dunya for the betterment of Allah Almighty's servants who are lost. That's what they do. They're not lecturers. They ain't come to beat us down. They come to beat us up. To beat us up. Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Takbir! Allahu Akbar! We don't know no better. We're our leaders. They don't even have prayer in school. I mean, all our politicians, do you think politicians can ever do anything for the people? Allah ain't never sent no officials to do nothing. And a democracy, what is a democracy? So we can put another shaitan in office. So when, when Allah Almighty said, Moses, Moses, what Allah said, no, 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 wait, hold on a minute. Y'all got to vote, see if y'all like Moses. Moses, you go around and shake everybody's hand and then see you can get to, you can get the most votes. Who, when he called up to the mountain, he called Moses. He ain't called nobody else. When he raised up Jesus, he ain't raised up nobody else. When he raised Muhammad, he just raised Muhammad up. When he raised uh, uh, Jacob and Isaac and, and Abraham and, 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 Mo, and, 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 and all of those, he called them. And they work through them for the many. That's called a divine dictate. Because who can better guide us than the one who created us? Everything in existence, Allah Almighty brought everything in existence, and yet we're not looking to the one that brought everything in existence, that we're going to create our own little laws? What is wrong with us? We lack discipline, we lack guidance, we lack everything. All we're thinking about is eating, sleeping, drinking, and procreating. We are dying as a species. Because when you're dying spiritually, spiritually, then you don't have no hereafter. When your body is in the grave, you're done, for real. If you think your life is miserable now, it's even more miserable. Once you leave here, guidance is miraculous. And what's even more mirac mirac miraculous than that is when you hear and obey the guidance and you can apply it in your life. And it's brought to us so simply that our hearts understand. Y'all hear me? Y'all feel me? That makes you responsible. That means Allah Almighty has put into you what he's put into everybody else as human. The ability to know. The ability to overcome our weaknesses. The ability to become, overcome our imperfection, to become perfected. Only through the belief of Allah and his apostle. That that brought that Allah Almighty said to us. That's what's gangster. That's what's in. Everything else don't even have no life. It doesn't even have no future. Why would you chase something that has no future? If you think you like your winner. You want real manhood or real womanhood? You got to follow a man. The prophets were all men. Men of God, Allah Almighty. And their wives were women of Allah Almighty. And all of them were married. That's why Jesus Christ got to come back because he didn't have no wife. He had to get out of Dodge because all his disciples left him to fend for himself except for Allah Almighty had to bring him to himself. He says, why do I leave a prophet down there? His, 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 his crew didn't left him. His disciples left him except for Barnabas. Except for St. Barnabas. May Allah bless him and raise his station high and high. Anytime you mention them, their body could come on us, their blessings come on us. All of those we mentioned, we're so lucky to be here. We're so lucky to be hearing what we're hearing. We're so lucky to be feeling what we're feeling. I'm no one. Don't look at me as anything. 
I ain't trying to be nothing. I already know who Allah is. I know I'm not. We ask Allah to forgive us and to help us in here after all we love the Fatih. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I was a salam, I had a caro, Muslim, Muhammad, and Nabi, who me, why I did he was a fear of the Lord. Alhamdulillah, I mean, praise be to Allah who have sent his servant the book and have allowed therein no crookedness. He have made it straight and clear in order that he may warn the godless of a terrible punishment from him and that he may give glad tidings to the believers who work righteous deeds that they shall have a goodly reward. That's it, that's all. It's not complex. So we need examples of goodness. We got a lot of examples of badness, and that's all we have. In order for us to feel like it's the fashion of being the end, we, can, we emulate those bad images. That's just a test to see if we know ourselves. Because shaitan is not of us. He is not of us. He told Adam, you from clay, I'm from a smokeless fire. No human being is from a smokeless fire. He is not of us, therefore he feels he is superior to us. So we can never be better than him if we're being trained by him because he's always going to be above us. He's inferior to us. We are something special. And we need to know what it is. And you need to understand what it is. Because we can't continue to live like animals on an animal level and think that we're in the high life and think we're going to be happy because shaitan is bringing us a lot of doggone fun. I was just hearing on the, on the radio just now, they're going to be at a club tonight. They're gonna be, it's going to be a lot of fun there. We're going to have this DJ. We're going to have a lot of fun. That's all Shaitan brings us fun. Happiness is something that's rare. How many happy people do you really know? Really? If they have something, they're happy. If they don't have something, they're happy. If they're in sick, they're happy. And they're in pain, they're still happy. Because they know that this too should pass. They know the nature of of the physical world. This too will pass. That's why they can be patient. And that's why they have gratitude. They are grateful because they know this is going to pass. You think Shaitan is going to always dominate humanity? You think he's always going to have his dupes in all the high levels in the country, the presidents and the emperors and the kings that are Worshiping shaitan and are living according to shaitan's laws. You think that's always going to happen? Pharaoh had an expiration date. Don't think the Quran, Old Testament, New Testament are tales of the ancient. No. That is the history. There are some in the Old Testament, there's some things that were changed because shaitan used some people to change some words in it. The, the, the Hebrew, Hebrew language, Aramaic language, or Moses and Jesus. But in the Quran, the original text is there. But Allah does not preserve, Allah does not protect the word in the book. Allah protects the Quran through the hearts of his servants. If they burn all the Qurans, they are servants of Allah Almighty that's running this world. Because Allah says the heavens and the earth cannot contain him, but the heavens... The heavens and the earth cannot contain them, but the heart of the believers can. They can bring back each word, verbatim, quotatum, even all the way back through the Old Testament, New Testament, and the Quran. That's like, that's gangster. That's perfection. That is the Surat al king. Don't you know our whole struggle is, we say, the, how many times we say the Fatiha? Oh, Lord, guide me on the straight way. Not on the way of those who incur their wrath and were led astray, but those who incur their blessings. 
We are fighting for the Sarat. We are, what can, if, uh, if you're crooked, then you ain't on the Sarat. So crooked is imperfection because it's not the straight way. It is not taking us to our target. If you take an arrow and it goes crooked, it don't hit the, the target, you ain't on the straight way. You ain't hit the target. It's not perfected. You haven't hit the bullseye. Well, Allah Almighty is telling us over and over again, I'm ordering you to your perfection. That's why Allah says, obey the prophets, obey Allah, obey the prophets, and obey those who I'm putting authority over you. <coughs> they will train you how to reach your perfection. They will train you how to get on the Sarat and stay on the Sarat. And if you fall off the Sarat, all you have to do is repent to your Lord to get back on the Sarat. So if you miss, you can say, oh no, you went too far to the left. Bring it over, hold your elbow up a little, and then wink the eye and hold your breath. Trainers. Allah Almighty sends trainers among humanity to bring them to perfection. SubhanAllah. Allah didn't leave us to ourselves. But Shaitan want to make us think we've been left to ourselves and he is our sincere advisor. You don't think Shaitan will come up to you and say, Salaam Alaikum? You think he'll come with a pitchfork and horns? No, he's going to come up on your kind of way. He has a silk tongue. He can razzle and dazzle you. How he cheated Eve was he was flattering Eve. You know women like to be flattered. Sometimes they like you to lie to them. And he come on the men too. He get our egos to take us down. He bring our desires. And direct our desires in the wrong way to bring us down. And that's why Allah said, don't follow your ego because this is what shaitan used to cheat you. He knows how to cheat you. Women can reach their perfection in 40 days. Because of that power they have, but they can lose it quickly because of the vanity that they have. Men can take longer because of the vanity they have. Take them 40, 40 days, take a woman 40 hours. You know, you see why Shaitan got to come on, on the people that are married. He got to come on humanity. He, his whole thing is to keep the man and woman apart. He created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, or Eve and Evelyn. <laughs> Let's be real. Ain't nobody scared of Shaitan. But someone who looks at Shaitan as his Lord, he going to dazzle and threaten you. I ain't going to give you this. I ain't going to give you this job unless you say, unless you do this. I ain't going to give you this money. I'm threatening you, throwing you out. I'm doing this. <clears throat> he ain't got no power. Law increases and decreases. <clears throat> Shaitan is just a mouthpiece. He tells you, I don't have no power over you. All I do is whisper. And because you don't know who you are and whose you are, you just listen and obey me. And we're going to mosques, we're going to synagogues and churches, and for what? We listen to Shaitan. So we don't have understanding. We don't have leaders that have understanding. From the time of the Prophet, Allah Almighty have always left leaders after the Prophet that had understanding that the Prophet had because they were connected to his heart. And that's the rope of Islam that Allah speaks about in the Quran. The rope of Islam is through the hearts of those believers that don't deviate. And when they fall, they repent. Allah says, my servants, my, what a beautiful fellowship. They're all returning to me. When they fall, they repent. Dawood alayhi salam, when he fell, he saw, he, he was asking the Lord Almighty, he says, oh Allah, don't leave me in the hands of my ego for a second. Just that one second, he saw a woman that he lusted after, sent her husband on the front line to be killed. Then an angel came to him when he was chilling in the form of a man with a complaint saying this man has 99 uh, cows or ewes and I only have one but he want my 99. Then David said, oh, what an unjust man. Then it came to him. Oh, what an unjust man. Here you are a prophet. 
and you have wives, many wives, and you take a man's wife and send them. He cried, he, what? He cried for 40 days on his face. The water that came from his eyes, he repented because he had fell out of felicity. He had fallen from his perfection. And to get his perfection back, he had to show sincerity to his Lord Almighty that he really, 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 really was really sorry. You're just going to say, oh, Allah, forgive me. Oh, stop for Allah. Let me go hit another blunt. Oh, stop for Allah. Let me hit that sister. Let me hit that brother. Allah, forgive me. No. No. Those prophets, when they fell, what happened to, what happened to Eunice? When he left the people, Allah had him swallowed up by a doggone well. He stayed in the well, and he repented in that well. And he had to be sincere because Allah Almighty had the well to spit him out so he can go back to the people. What about us? Our perfection is in sincere and obedience, total submission to Allah Almighty. That's our perfection. When we made our promise to Allah Almighty before coming to this life, we were in the state of perfection. When he sent us here in our physical bodies, it threw us out of the state of perfection into the state of imperfection, into a weakness. So Allah Almighty sent prophets to us to say, look, here's how you get back to your state of perfection. You got to repent against your imperfection. And you can't just sin and then go back and go back to that same thing. When you overcome something, you don't go back to that that you overcame. If we really understood how this, how you play this, you play this like a gangster, man, because your soul is at stake. Not your little money, you playing crap, and your little dollars and stuff. Or for a wine, or for a hit, or a blunt. No, your soul is at stake. You got to learn how to play this game. You got to learn how to play this game of life. Because your soul is at stake. You lose that, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got no hereafter. There is no hereafter. There is no spiritual life. Shaitan got your soul. And he would tell you the only way I can get your soul is when your ego is out of control. When you're imperfected and when you're weak. So Shaitan, come on us. Oh, I'm lonely. You are married. You got a wife. You got a husband. I'm lonely. Here comes Shaitan. You so fine. You so handsome. Oh, the wife ain't gonna know. The husband ain't gonna know. Somebody gonna know though. You know. <coughs> you know. Hey, that part of you that Allah put in you is watching you. <laughs> you got an angel on your right, you got an angel on your left. Writing it down. Don't think you get away with anything. You don't give away nothing. If you can't get away with nothing, why do something? I ain't gonna get away with it. I mean, if people really thought that they, they could go in the bank and take some money out, you'd be, more people would be robbing banks, wouldn't they? Yeah. I was invisible. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't invisible. Let's come back to our sound minds. Let's hear and obey. Let's make paradise on earth. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. We got that power. Do you want to go back and Allah say to you, how come you didn't use that power to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth? Well, I was just one person. Then Allah tells us something that we're going to feel real stupid. You ever heard of smoke of the bear? <coughs> what did he say? Take some match to start a forest fire? You couldn't have started nothing? Why you start something? We was there when we supported you. We had your back. Look what happened to the prophet piece of honor. 313 back was 3,000. What about Talut when he went against, God, uh, against uh, God, uh, 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 Goliath? It was only about 600 of them against 600,000. And once they popped off Goliath, everybody else, they lost their heart. He was a giant. He was the shaitan running everything. Once you knocked him out, everybody else fell back. 
He was the one that hit the, with the mouth. That's what we used to do was growing up. The one with the most mouth hit them and everybody else shut up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I survived. <laughs> the one with the biggest mouth hit him. That's their leader. Everybody else shut up. They gonna think you crazy. We're not here to be no, to be controlled by Shaitan. That's not why you're in the doors. Here. That's not why you're listening. We're here to grow up. Allah <coughs> is selecting us to bring the hot in the world. Regardless of what the odds are, what you think the odds are, the under is more the unseen than the seen. Allah running this. Allah is apostle running this. Don't fear. Don't grieve. ومن الله تفيك الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا I would suggest to uh, just for studying purposes uh, that we always put these on YouTube. Anything you think you didn't get, go on YouTube, Mercy Oceans 313, and to study. Study what was given to you for you. Come, come to Salah. <laughs>